Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Tie Break and uh, thanks for following us. Um, I'm Aaron Kumar and I'm delighted to say I'm joined once again by my good friend and the editor of Cricket World, John Pennington. John, how are you doing today? Very well, very well, Aaron. How are you? Yeah, doing well, John. Looking forward to the start of the weekend as usual. Um, John, it's been, once again, a very busy week, hasn't it, in, in world sports. Um, let's, let's start with cricket, John. I know England have named their ODI squad to talk to Sri Lanka. A couple of changes there, obviously, Ravi Rapara and Taylor back in. Balance uh, has been left out, so any surprises there for you, John, or is that kind of what you were expecting, or what, what do you make of that squad? Yeah, the squad itself, I quite like the squad, I mean, uh, other than the fact that Alistair Cook is still in it and still leading it, if you took Cook out and put Balance in, I think that would be a really a much better squad, we, we debated it too much now, Let, let's move on, he, he is captain, he's going to catch the World Cup soon, but they've just got to get on with it. Makes perfect sense to have Bopar in. He's, he should have been in for the Indies. I don't understand why he was dropped. He'll go well on in Sri Lanka. He's got a, I'm pretty sure he's got a good record in, in the subcontinent. He bowls a sort of medium pace spinners and things. That would, that would be a great asset to England. And then Taylor is a player I've been calling to be playing for England probably an awful much, about three or four years now. So very pleased to see him get a go. He's now got a chance to press his case for the World Cup. But yeah, Gary Ballard doesn't like to see him in as well because he proved across. Again, all formats really he can he can he can do the business. But if you're going to leave Alex because he's got to be in the team, therefore somebody has to miss out. So uh, we'll see how they go. It's going to be a tough challenge to, to go and beat Sri Lanka at home. They've just reappointed Marvin Atkins as head coach. They're on a, a good run of you know they they, they pushed South Africa hard. They've beaten Pakistan recently. There will be a tough challenge. I think they can win maybe two or three games there. I think they'll be doing pretty well. Okay, as you say, JP. All the build up right now. I mean, I know it's different conditions, but a lot of the mindset now is just thinking about the World Cup. And you say if England can pick up a couple of wins out there, it'll start to give them some confidence, won't it? You know, going going into that World Cup next year. Yeah, absolutely. And it, the conditions are different, but these are the you know they've got eight or nine games before the World Cup. So we've got to make sure they get the best use out of those. You know, working out combinations. Remember, Stuart Ball's not there; he's injured, so there's a, there's, you know, there's a bit of a shootout there between. Uh, to the likes of Chris Wokes and Ben Stokes and others to, to try and work their way into their squad. So there's still a, a few things outstanding and, and a few players with, with something to prove, which I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing, but uh, it could just push England on to under some strong performances and that's what they'll be hoping. OK, and JP, I mean, that's, that's with regards to the ODIs and the World Cup. There's also been a bit happening in the Champions League uh, this week. Uh, just give us a little update on that, what's been going on there. Yeah, quite a, quite a lot happening. Um, as we as we thought of thought, the IPL teams are looking strong. Kolkata are almost in the semi-finals. Kings Eleven Punjab absolutely crashed Northern Districts yesterday, but they're in the semi-finals. Um, Northern Districts have been disappointed me, but I, I think what's happened with them is they've really come up short in Indian conditions against top class spin bowling, and they, they've been you know twice folded for under a hundred, and you don't win games of cricket doing that. And they could. There's a slim chance they could still qualify, but it's highly unlikely due to their run rate. Kate Kobe could get through, but if Hobart win uh, tomorrow in Barbados, that they would go through along with Kings Eleven. Uh, Chennai, they've got to do some work because, of course, their game was washed out a couple yeah. of days ago. So they, they're really a little bit behind the able, so they need to win against Perth later on today. In fact, I think the winner of that game will be very, very well placed to sort of join Colcat in the semi finals. So it's almost like a quarter final, but. Uh, yeah, we've seen some, some more sort of exciting performances. So if Ryan was on good form, I know you were, were covering that that particular game, Aaron, and still on the reason. I think the game, you know, the, the, the spinners, the Colcat are doing the job. So, uh, yes, it's been another exciting week in the Premier in the Champions League. And one game in particular, one that I sort of kept uh, reasonably close on yesterday, Barbados against Kate Covers and the tie in regulation. But there's no way Kate Covers should have got to a tie because Barbados should have run, uh, run Engelbert out for last ball. Uh, fumbled, fumbled it, and then Coco won the Super Bowl by one run. So you really, literally, cannot get any closer than that. So uh, yeah, it's been more exciting actually in the Championship, but it does look as if the the IPL teams are going to you know certain dominate the semi finals. Fantastic, and don't forget, guys, you can uh, keep up to date with what's going on uh, on cricketworld.com for all, all your latest stuff from from the Champions League, and you can stay tuned with that there. So uh, fantastic, lots to look forward to in the Champions League, then JP. Yeah, there is. I have to be honest. I haven't watched as much as I 
much as I, I would have liked this week, because as you know, there's a <laughs> up, up and down the country doing do some, some shows and sort of uh, acts and boycotts. So hopefully, I'll have a, you know, give a, a, bit, a bit of an update. And as you say, check out crookerworld.com for the very latest. Completely. And uh, let's, uh, let's move on to tennis, Aaron, and uh, some news of Andy Murray making a final for the first time since, uh, well, since, since Wimbledon 2012. It is JP, yeah, we, we, we were talking about this a bit off air. I think it's, a, it's been a good move by... 2013, isn't it? Yes, 2013, you know. It's been, it's been a good move by Murray. Um, we, in tennis, we have these different levels of tournaments. Obviously, your Grand Slams, you can win 2,000 points. And then your Masters, where you get all the players, 1,000. And then you get the ones that are not mandatory, so they call them the 500s or the 250s. And that just means how many points you'll win if you win the whole thing. And traditionally, an ATP 250, I mean, you get some Grand Slam champions playing... And, things like that, but generally it's a little bit quote-unquote of a weaker field. Um, but I think Murray just felt that having not made a final since Wimbledon last year, he really needs to get, you know, he needs confidence. He, he started to play well again, he looked quite good at the US Open, he just came up a bit short against Djokovic, so he's gone into this 250 event, looked fairly solid all week. Today he had a few wobbles against Juan Monaco. Um, Monaco has been a top 10 player and he actually had a two-all two head-to-head record against Murray coming into today. So it wasn't a complete surprise that he was able to push Murray a little bit. But then Murray won the sort of last nine games and easily put his way in the final. He'll face Tommy Robredo tomorrow in the final. Robredo has beaten Murray a couple of times, but quite interestingly, JP, guess when was the last time they faced, you know, faced each other? It was Wimbledon last year, yes, and Murray won the first yes. so that, that could be a good omen for Murray. So I'm expecting Murray to, to come through tomorrow and, and, and win that first title since Wimbledon, and I think that'll be a much-needed confidence boost. He said he's not too worried about whether he qualifies for London for the O2. I mean, I'm not going to doubt what Murray's saying. Uh, I'm, I'm sure at some point in him he would love to be there because he's got a lot of fans there, it's a big event, but I, I do feel that what he really needs is match, match play, getting the wins, getting some titles. And obviously next week it starts to pick up the level. You've got a 500 event in um, Beijing where you've also got guys like Djokovic and Nadal's making his comeback. So it will get tougher, but if you can win this, he'll be, he'll be well, well oiled for that. And we've also got an event going on, a 250 event in um, Malaysia. And you've got Kane Shikori, who made the US Open final. So he's continued that run of form and made the finals in Malaysia. And he'll be going up against Benito tomorrow. So I expect Shikori to, to get through and win that one. Yeah, and it's an interesting move, isn't it, for Manny Murray? You know, sometimes, you know, top sportsmen, they, they need to sort of maybe take a step away from the, the spotlight just to, to get back to that feeling of being completely on top of their game and in form again. We, we see it in other sports with football players, you know, they're coming back from injury or that's when they get to play for reserves or cricket and things like a second eleven. So it, it, this is a, almost a sort of similar move, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, JP. I, I was seeing when, you know, he was down, like losing that first set, he was getting quite a lot of as he sometimes does, you know, abuse on Twitter, people are saying if he can't win this tournament. Then they... And I agree, it would have been a big setback if he'd gone out today. But having said that, I think I look at it a different kind of way. Like, um, having come through a match like that against Monaco, I think what he needed was, his, as you say, taking a step back from the big pressure cooker environment, getting through a tough match like this with Monaco, will prepare him well potentially for next week. Because you know if he comes up against a Nadal or a Djokovic, there are going to be times in a match where you don't have it all your own way. There's going to be like tough moments, and you feel like you'll be more ready for it after a week like this. So I think it was a very good move from him. And uh, yeah, so it'll be very interesting. We've got quite a lot of tennis still to come this year, haven't we, JP, with a couple of Masters in the year. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that and be able to follow what's going on in the tiebreak. So JP, away from the tennis, obviously we, we did have a little preview show on the, um, on the Ryder Cup, and it was quite an interesting start yesterday, wasn't it? A bit topsy-turvy, and... Is living up to that kind of dramatic and tense contest that we, we thought it might. It is. I mean, I think we both sort of thought it would be quite close, and it, and it has. I mean, obviously, you and we're two points ahead at the close of day one, but uh, it looks as if by the time we finish this broadcast, you know, they may, may even have levelled already on, on K2 as they, they complete the fourth. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Ryder Cup almost seems incapable of producing, you know, a, a sort of normal day's golf. There's always some sort of drama or and also this controversy and you know, interesting sort of stories and things and obviously we had that brilliant comeback late on in the day from, from Rory McIlroy and Sergio Garcia to, to, to half their, their game they think oh it's a half but actually if you think about it it's an important half it's almost more important to the Europeans because they're, they they only need 14 points to retain the trophy the Americans only need 14 and a half to win it so they're chasing a smaller target so uh, absolutely crucial half and a great way for them to, to end the day after 
you know, they've had some ups and some downs, as you say, you know, Justin Rose and, and the Stenson have been playing, you know, unbelievably good golfers. Some others, in Poulter, for example, haven't been playing so well. That, that, that's part of the challenge of the captains, I suppose, to work out the better combinations to make sure that the, the team prevails. It, it's going to be, it could, I, I still think, as I said on uh, when we did our preview, that it, it could well go down to the last two or three singles, and I'll be, I'll be watching it and keeping a very close eye on things. Absolutely, JP. I just want to talk to you a little bit about that, that comeback because it was, it was incredible to watch, wasn't it? I mean, as I say, it was quite topsy turvy. I mean, a lot of those matches, and you just felt like this was one that the USA looked fairly comfortable. They had a putt, not the easiest putt, but a putt to kind of uh, seal the match. I think it was on the 16th hole, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that missed that, and then all of a sudden, McElroy comes with an extraordinary birdie, then Garcia makes a phenomenal shot. One that actually bounced off the tree, and then he was able to make a phenomenal shot. And it was just incredible, wasn't it? You could just feel the crowd getting into it. You could just feel the the atmosphere. McElroy and Garcia, how well they were gelling together. It was it was great theatre, great to watch. Yeah, it, it was, and, and the Americans had yeah up until that maybe almost it wasn't there, but they gave you the football they're looking like they're going to go and win this because Matt and Matt got it weren't playing all that well. Even on the yes, you, you mentioned apart from the part of the 16th, they didn't miss by an awful lot. That would have won it for the Americans, of course. Then Macro was monster apart from the, the 17th, and he, he pulls that drive out, and you think, well, where, where the hell's that gone? Hits a tree, gets a, a favourable line, rather than sort of play safe, which is basically, yeah, you, you don't do it in Riley Cup. Garcia is a, a miracle shot out of the rough, it gives, gives Macro the chance, chance to finish it off. So, uh, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a fantastic comeback, and you know, maybe not the, not the first one we'll see, see on the weekend, but we, we may not see one as a sort of dramatic in a way that he won't be sort of an awful lot for the way they did it, you know, long part hit into the rough, and rescue shot of, of the highest order, it, it was something else. Absolutely, and from, from what you've seen so far, JP, and I was still relatively, not you know, reaching halfway stage, but who's impressed you? Is there any particular player or anyone that's impressed you the most or someone that you think we should look out for for the, for the remaining period of time in this, in this event? Well, I think Justin Rose is becoming... He, um, he's a sorry, you know, <laughs> almost flag bearer, hasn't he? He's, he's on the form of his life. So you think they want to get him out again later this afternoon and possibly lead with him tomorrow to try and, you know, try and get a point on the board. I mean, West has been very solid. He's looked good on the greens, which uh, if you're regular followers of golf, that's not generally his his forte on, on the regular tour, so that's been very pleasing to see. And I have to say, pretty much all of the rookies have been very good on both sides, uh, both for Europe and, and, and for the USA, so uh, those would be my sort of, I've picked about half and half, half the team there, but uh, certainly Rose's West would have been rookies, so they've been very impressive. Fantastic. Well, uh, don't forget to keep uh, keep tweeting us, um, who you think is going to come out on top and what your best matchups are and what you're looking out for on at Tiebreak Sports. Now remember, keep following us guys, because once we get to 100 followers, we'll be giving away one of these Bones Original shirts. JP, once again, thank you so much for all your time today and all your expert opinions. That's okay, Aaron. Pleasure as always. And uh, we'll see you all again soon.